Hyde Park Stadium for the, not the unveiling, but a chance to meet Derby County's new manager, Philip Cocker. On the top table, the new manager, alongside the executive chairman and owner of Derby County, Mel Morris. As I mentioned, we're going to start and then Mel will say a few words and then it's straight into the broadcasters. Very excited to uh, obviously have Philip with, with us here today. Uh, it's been uh, quite a long journey uh, to get to this point. Uh, but in terms of uh, where we are as a club, this could not have been a, a better appointment for us. And I'm extremely excited in terms of what the ramifications are of that for the club, particularly in that sort of bond between the academy, the first team, but also in terms of philosophy and the style of play that's so important to ourselves and, of course, to our fans as well. So uh, we'll throw it open to questions. Philip and Cockle, I think we'll start first of all with Martin Lee. First and foremost, congratulations. How did this come about? When did you first hear of Derby's interest in you? Uh, yeah, first of all, very happy to be here, of course. Um, yeah, the first uh, time I heard of the interest uh, through my, uh, my agent. Um, yeah, we were a few days in London and uh, it was a great moment to meet each other and just have a conversation about football, about the club, the philosophy, uh, people behind uh, Derby County. And yes, this was a very yeah, pleasant, interesting meeting. I think it's important uh, for me as, as, as a manager to know how a club works what the core values are how they think about football um, and and the ideas about managing a club and if you can find each other in a in a good way yeah it's 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 a good moment to step in uh, as a manager and we had a quite a long talk maybe a, even a few hours i think um, and and you get a certain feeling i had it as a player for me, as a manager, it's the same. And um, yeah, we, we after the conversation, uh, we left. We stayed in touch over a uh, period of time. And then you get to think about yeah, possibility to step in, how you want to do it, uh, if it suits you as a, as a manager, uh, possibilities at the club, uh, focus on academy, developing players, kind of style of football uh, the club wants to play so it uh, took some time in the end but I think the first uh, meeting was very important did you have any concern you, you played at the absolute elite level for Barcelona and, and, and with your national team <coughs> as well you've managed in the top divisions and, and, had, and won championships at PSV did you have any concerns that this job was one stage removed from the Premier League that it was going to be the championship rather than the Premier League when you made your move over to England no, because I, I step in or make a move uh, because I think uh, this is the right step in my career and, and the right fit. Uh, nowadays in football, a lot of managers just get appointed and the idea behind it, I think, is important. I, I realize and I know in the world of football, uh, you have to bring a certain performance. It's, it's normal. It doesn't matter if you are a manager in the... In the Premiership in, in La Liga, in Holland, but I think football is a little bit wider. Uh, I think uh, Derby invested a lot in the academy already over a couple of years and they built something and they want to continue in this process. Uh, it's an important value uh, that I learned in Holland and in Holland is also very important. Um, so 
not only the way you, fo the, you, f you play football, but what suits me and what's a fit for me as a, as a person and, and a manager. And if I have the feeling, yeah, it's a good fit, um, a good moment to step in. Well, all the other stuff is less important, I believe. What targets have you set yourself here in the short and the long term? And what <coughs> targets has the chap on your right set you in the short and the long term as well? Yeah, it's something everybody wants to hear, of course. Um, <laughs> like we said before, to develop players, uh, that's very important to bring on the philosophy we have, uh, not only at the first team, but at the whole club. And alongside the performance of the first team, the development of the Young Players Academy. So try <coughs> to make a plan for each individual player who we think has the potential to be playing in the first team of, of Derby, to make these steps to reach the goal. And of course, the performance with, uh, with the first team of Derby, and we want to be competitive. They had a great season, very close. They only uh, lost the final. Um, so I think <coughs> we'll always we'll, we'll try to get in the top six uh, of the league. But the most important thing so the football we play and the development of the team and even individual players. So we don't only look at it has to be a top six. It's a total picture. And so the Premier League is a goal, but maybe not in the first seed in the world. Yeah. yeah. Um, your predecessor, Frank Lampard, was very popular with the supporters. His character, we've seen no many pictures of him bouncing with the supporters. He had a quite a bond <laughs> with them. <laughs> Do you think it might be difficult for you to match that bond with the supporters when, in, in fairness, some of them are a little bit sad that he's gone? Well, of course, I can imagine that some of the fans are sad he's gone because he, he really did a great job. Fantastic player, great career. So, for a club like, uh, like Derby and the fans, it's, it's fantastic to, to, to have Frank, Frank as a manager. Um, but a great opportunity for him to lead a club like Chelsea, of course. And uh, I, I'm not a person that I'm going to try to do the same like the old manager. I think you have to be yourself. Uh, what I like is, is the relationship and the bond between the club and the fans. This is really, really close. It's important for the club. And I think also the same way. So you have to work together. You have to show you're proud to, to, to work for the club, to play for the club. I uh, want to see it in the pitch of, of the team. And uh, you know, in this way, in my way of working, I'm sure we have a good uh, relationship between uh, the manager and the fans. How would you describe your personality? What would you say to the supporters if they haven't seen your management style anymore? You, it, so far, your, your, your philosophy and the way you approach things? Yeah, my philosophy is, is uh, on the ball having ball possession, not only possession to have the ball, but to create something on the ball. Um, not a too direct, uh, long passing, I like the short passing, dynamic in the team, a lot of movement. Um, so I, I, I saw many games of last season and it's not so different of the way I, they are used to play. That's why it's also something I liked. So th you don't have to change a lot, only details. Uh, and that's what we're working in, in the preseason. Um, very analytical as a, as, a, as a manager. All the time thinking about football, uh, tactics, exercises, and also during games. Uh, calm, because if you lose your head, I think you lose your way of analyzing the game. So, more or less. The short version. <laughs> Sounds good. Matter of fact, I could just ask you, uh, there was a bit of doom and gloom around this place when you missed out at Wembley and then it was pretty clear that Frank Lampard was going to Chelsea. You sit here now with a, a manager of Philips calibre alongside you um, and that doom and gloom has almost been forgotten. There's real positivity amongst the fans. Are they right to feel that positive? I think so. Uh, firstly, I think that, you know, after the playoff final, which was, of course, devastating to, to have that, We'd arranged uh, that we would come back here to celebrate if we got through. Uh, 
we didn't get through, but the players all said they still would like to come back here and, and join each other before we, we close the night off. I'd already set off back to my place in Chelsea and end up arriving back here for about an hour or so after them. Uh, so it wasn't quite as, as, as sort of morbid as you might think. Uh, I think that obviously Frank moving on was, was a shock, I think, to the fans. We, we always knew it was going to be a possibility. You know, first of all, like I say, we wish him well, and I'm glad to see the early signs are, are looking good for him. Uh, but, but, you know, from the fans' perspective, th there's a lot of things around what Frank had done that carry forward. And Frank came into a year of, of very strong transition in terms of the playing style. Uh, so there was a lot of work to be done at that point. Um, and I think some of those sort of, the effort of that continues forward in terms of giving it a, a base to work upon. But I think in, in someone of Philip's calibre coming on board who fits the philosophy and the style of the club, I think the fans should be very, very excited by that. I, I don't think there's any, uh, the fans I've seen are, are all massively excited about the season. There, there's no hangover. Do you think it's a fit? Yeah, I do. I do. Um, I've got to ask you about money, you know, we always do, because it's such a key part of How much do you need? The reality of the situation is, it is that the, the budget has to be a little bit tight, doesn't it, because of the restrictions mm -hmm. imposed on you by the EFL. So yeah. what can Philip work with in terms of a budget? Has he got money to spend on players or has he got to develop players? Well, I think there's, there's two parts to, to answering the question. The first one is, of course, we've got a number of young academy players who are, let's say, approaching the point where they may feature at some point. That may not be quite this season, but, but they're certainly getting close. Therefore, what we don't want to be doing is to be buying players into positions where we feel we have an aspiring player that probably is going to come through in the next 12 months or so. So I think it's fair to say you're probably going to see more loan players coming in to fill those positions. That also gives us opportunities as well to bring in additional talent that maybe on a purchase would not be possible to obtain. Uh, but the rationale for the loan players is more to make sure we're not blocking the pathway off for the academy product. But of course, if there's positions where we don't have an academy player, then of course we'll look to purchase. But we're not looking to have a big spend this summer, but we'll be very prudent and, and very targeted with what we do do. But we're, we're keen to make sure Philip has a, a squad that's going to be competitive in the season. And Philip, when you hear that and the reality of the situation, and you had the chance to spend some time with the squad up till now. That was quite useful for you, I should imagine. Where do you assess how where that squad is right now? How do you assess where that squad is in terms of ability and maybe gaps? Where are you looking to strengthen? Uh, well, we're still working on strengthening the team. Uh, it will take maybe uh, some more days. Uh, but, but like Mel said, it's very important to judge your players you have which uh, positions do we think uh, we have our own talent that, that may be uh, not, not right at this moment but in, in let's say within a season they can step up so in this position we don't want to block the possibility to develop and to grow as, as, a, as a young talent uh, but in certain positions well we need sometimes a player with a little bit more experience to guide uh, the rest of the young team uh, and if we don't have the young talent then we try to, to buy uh, a new player if we find him on the market of course no buying just for buying uh, always have to be an idea behind it and uh, in the end we have to have a comp competitive team uh, to be able to reach our goals of course and last one for me um, of course, the championship will be very new to you. I wonder what you've seen from afar and what you expect of it in terms of its specific challenges. Um, and how important is the chap that used to work for us, Liam Rossini, um, to helping you learn that and approach it and, and you know, give you some insight and knowledge about it? Well, apart from his qualities as, as, as a coach, because <laughs> yes. that's why he's, uh, he's at the club. Uh, but it's, it's also one of the, of the values that he has. He know, uh, not of knowledge about the league, uh, and a lot of uh, knowledge about the individual players, uh, so it's something extra. Uh, and uh, with his playing career, which is experience, he can yeah, help, help help the individual player. Um, and I'm very happy he, he joined us, uh, as, as I'm with my own staff, Tom and Chris, of course, who I work with 
many years, so I know them much better. But uh, it was very pleasant for us to have like a 10 day period in, uh, in Florida to work together uh, with the players, but also as a, as a staff. Um, so a uh, huge asset for the club, I think. And uh, yeah, we, we have to work together. So uh, for me, the staff to work with, it's not only the, yeah, the, the physical, the, the technical department, we are also a team. We have to show it to the players. They have to perform as a team, as important as the individual player. And so, the other part of my badly phrased question: What about the championship? What do you expect of that league? Well, I saw, of course, uh, many games of derby. Uh, before you step in, you have to see games. You have to take a look at the team, the players, the style of play, and then you see the all kinds of different opponents. Opponents with very direct game, very physical game. Also teams who play very well, different systems. So I think it's it's a very interesting league, very difficult one because you play so many games and all the teams are really tight, close together. So the difference is very close and that's, that, that's what makes the, the league very interesting, I believe. Thank you both, good luck. Thank you. Philip, welcome to Derby Inter after being decent relief today. Um, you've had a break from football. Yes. Are you excited to be back and feeling refreshed? Yes, I do. Yes. How important was that? Yeah, it was important for me. Uh, like I played maybe over 20 seasons of football. And um, when I retired as a player, yeah, I, I continued as a coach at the same time. Um, uh, Bert van Marwijk. He asked me to be one of his assistant coaches in the national team, uh, along uh, with Frank de Boer. It was a great opportunity to learn from experienced coach and also to act on, on a level of the national team in Holland. So I did it for four years, but I combined it with my work at PSV and, and uh, got my uh, coaching uh, diplomas. But then when you work in football, well, seasons they fly by like it's unbelievable speed and so now over more than 11 years as a coach and yeah I'm not the type of guy who plans a year okay now I stop I take a break for a year but when it, something happens that after a few months you're out you can just say okay I step in in the first possibility I get or I take a break so in this case as I thought sometimes it's good to step out of the world like it's going on 24 hours football which is positive because everybody has a great passion for the game but just to get the focus out and have some rest it was uh, was good but i felt in the last couple of months like i had as a player a little bit uh, like hmm, we have to get started again um, but like i said before you don't want to step in just the first one who, who, who passes by. It has to be a fit, it has to match your philosophy about the game and football. So, now we're here and I'm excited, of course, to start here. So what did Mel say to persuade you that Derby was the right fit for you at that point? Yeah, it was not one phrase, it was like the long conversation we had about, uh, about football and in general about the club, uh, how they work with the academy, how, how the philosophy of football is how core values of the club are and, and it's something we talked about for a few hours and and then you step back you go home you let it sink in and give it a lot of thought so if the feeling's right then you step in and so we did there's a, a weight of expectation derby you've come so close so many seasons recently <laughs> <sold> now. <coughs> How will you deal with that weight of expectation? You said you're aiming for a top six finish, hopefully, but it's a big challenge in the championship. How will you deal with that as a manager? Yeah, it will be, uh, will, it will be tough. Uh, competition is, uh, yeah, is, is tough. A lot of teams who, who I believe have the, yeah, the potential to, to, to be in the top six. Uh, but it's also good and interesting that things will not come easy. They never do in football. Um, and the experience the, the, the club had in, in the playoffs and the final, uh, you can look at it as a, in a negative way that they 
just couldn't make the last step, but I also think it's, it's one more experience you have. So the next time you reach your goal, your bag is, 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 is full and the chances to be successful will, will be higher than maybe before, especially when you have a younger squad, they, they need these kind of experiences and take it with them and we're going to fight for the next opportunity. How important is recruitment going to be? And Frank used his contacts brought very successfully to bring in loan players. Is that something you're going to utilise as well for the season ahead? Yes, yes, we will. We will, yeah. Development of each player is important. Um, you have your team tactics, our team goals. But even if a player doesn't play a lot of games, if, if he feels he's, he's progressing, in football, he's developing himself in all kinds of ways. He's still uh, a very positive and, and important asset for the team. And this is what we try to give with, with all staff. And we look at the positions we need. Uh, players from outside maybe alone or sometimes can be a buy to have, to, have, to have the, the perfect balance in the team. That's what we're looking for now in this moment. And you've got a reputation for focusing on youth and developing that talent. That's always been important here at Derby. Was that part of the decision now and part of your decision too that there's the pathway it's all been here? Yeah, it's very important. Uh, I think that uh, we've seen this year that the price of, of more senior, older players is starting to soften. We've seen that the value of younger players rise dramatically, as you've seen in the transfer window already this, this season. I think that trend will continue. And, uh, and, and therefore, for us to, to make sure we're, we're getting the very best out of our academy product is, is really important to us. Of course, they've got to be good enough, but, uh, but at the end of the day, that only comes from be sometimes being given the opportunity and, of course, the opportunity to develop as well. So uh, we're very excited about that. You said you're very excited now. Obviously, Frank Gove was a huge blow sure. for you and, and for the fans and for the club in general. You called it, well, Rob described it as a coup. Mm -hmm. to, to get some of this calibre, how happy are you with how it's turned out in the end? No, I, I think it's allowed for a number of things. You know, I think Frank, in his first season, had a lot to, to learn. Uh, we, we would have expected that this next season, Frank would have picked a lot of additional things up and would have progressed. But of course, being someone who's got several years of experience at the top level, it, it's of course an advantage because many of the pieces that you would want to put in place are a little bit more clear in, in terms of what's to be done. So it, it really is a, a very exciting time to be able to put it all together and, and see so many parts of the organisation align around this disappointment. Uh, and it is that three or four hour conversation around football, around how we think about things, how we're, we're to approach things, everything from recruitment to sports science to st statistics. Th there's many pieces of this that, that Philip you know, naturally embraces. And so there is a good opportunity here for us this season to be able to put those things in play. We've said already, Philip, the championship's a very different division, very tight division. It's going to be, you're going to have to get off to a good start, really, aren't you, with the players? And, and you've had those 10 days in, in America. How have you found them, and how excited are you about the start of the season, which is very far away at all now? Yeah, well, if I'll be honest, I would have liked to have a, a two or three weeks more time because <laughs> we had to step in, yeah, in, in really fast. Um, but as a player and as a manager, you have the same feeling. It's all about the games. Training is very important to get your message as, as, as a staff to the players, how we want to play, what's, what's, what are the principles of our game. Yeah, but at the end, it's about the games, winning games, playing games. And uh, you, you always hope for a good start. It's, it's, it's good for the, the, the confidence of the players and the, the beliefs in, in the team. But like I said, uh, in a season, you will uh, have many moments that it will get tough and difficult, and, and then we have to stick together and, and, and stay on our path. So, looking forward to a very interesting season. Thank you very much. Any more TV broadcasters?